I think his legacy will be the idea that architecture can be new and different. It can be emotionally exciting and emotionally engaging in a way that's, that's very positive and yet not like anything you've experienced before. Something people don't necessarily know about Frank, because he's such a genius and such a, a creative force, is that he's also a very vulnerable guy. I couldn't think of anybody that was more in the 21st century than Frank. He never looked back. He was always looking forward. Frank's always been embracing uh, the work of artists and bringing things together. I think he likes the juxtaposition, that kind of conflict that can happen or the embrace that happens. I met Frank, the, I think the second time that I came here to Disney Hall. Uh, and immediately it was a, a very magical and unique connection. Uh, I don't know spiritual. I think, of, I think of Frank as, a, this is three words put together, as a sort of hard-nosed dreamer. I mean, he is, he is amazingly realistic for somebody who dreams so much. But Frank's never played the game exactly like anybody else. There were a lot of setbacks. He didn't move in one step. It was long and painful and took many, many years and a lot of twists and turns and a lot of false starts and a lot of disappointment. He was, for a long time, a prophet without honor in his own land here in Los Angeles. Gradually, though, the, the, the architecture world began to see that this was a serious guy doing interesting, unusual, and important things. I think the real change was, was his own house in Santa Monica. At the same time as I did this house, I was building Santa Monica Place. The night Santa Monica Place opened, we had a dinner here with the president of the Rouse Company, he was a lawyer, and he says to me, what the hell is this? I said, well, I, you know, I was experimenting and playing with it, and he said, do you like it? He said, you must like it. I said, I do. He said, well, if you like this, you can't possibly like that. And he pointed over there to, towards Santa Monica Place. And I said, I, you're right, I don't. And he says, so why are you doing, why'd you do that? I said, because I had to make a living. And he said, stop it. He said, you should stop it. Don't do that. And I said, you're right. And he and I shook hands that night and decided to quit everything. It was like jumping off a cliff. It was an amazing feeling. And I was so happy from then on. Frank's triumphant achievement, in a way, is that he is the only figure, only architectural figure in our time who has done important work that is at the cutting edge, that is at the vanguard, that has been enormously popular in, among the general public. He wants the same kind of comfort that you feel in a more traditional building. He just wants to say to you that that sense that a building is nurturing you and feeling good can happen in an unusual, different, and strange and exciting building too. It's about the possibilities that we can have of what type of structures, what type of environments we can be in, what type of freedom we can have in, in uh, manipulating form, being in 
uh, inside the form, uh, moving around the form. So it's, it's inspiring because, you know, what can we be as human beings, as creators, and what type of world can we create for ourselves? There was another architecture firm that had presented their plans. The first meeting I went to, they showed us the slides, and I really was disappointed because they still had gas lights. It was far from the 21st century. And I thought, no, this isn't what we want. We want forward going. And as I was walking out, I was thinking to myself, and I thought, if we could get Frank, that would be the art. His office has been an international leader in uh, digital software that has made advanced buildings possible. But the design process always starts with just something in his head, with sketches and drawings, and then with three-dimensional models. Only later, when he's got an idea kind of right, do they start bringing in the technology as a way of translating it. Just seeing these large, large steel beams coming in, and all of them were created on a CAD system, and very, very uh, intricate and abstract, and really the first time that the world has ever seen anything on this type of scale and this type of construction. So it, it's wonderful how Frank uses it as a tool. Uh, it's not the end product. It's not that you just embrace technology and here it is. Uh, he really showed us it's what you can do with it. Frank conceived of the inside of the hall as a galleon for music. And so you see the sails. And you're almost in a ship of, of sound. On the stage, you feel the audience is, you know, is part of the, of, uh, of the concert. That interaction is always very important for Frank. No, for the people to feel that they are far, no, it has to be closer, it's warm. And, and I think that is the reason why he conceived uh, this whole like this. We had a very good sense of the fact that we had a masterpiece on our hands. Frank may have a complex uh, psyche, but his own psyche is not itself the subject of his work. He, he lives both within his own mind and with an amazing ability to transcend it at the same time. And that's really what Frank has done with architecture. He reinvents the form, not to kill the old form, but in fact to keep the art alive, to keep architecture as he's always envisioned it alive. He knows it has to be continually reinventing itself. I think he's a genius. I really do, but he sure doesn't look like one.